Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Backward Point, a cricket podcast hosted by myself, Nojo Sayed, and my brother, Bashar. There we go. Today's episode is going to be about the PSL rap and the India series rap, where India was wrapped out of the series oh, damn. <laughs> into the ODI, <laughs> from the ODI series <laughs> against Australia. We're going to be talking about everything uh, in the world of cricket. Um, the, we might preview the Afghanistan-Pakistan yeah, series that, a little bit sure. as well. And uh, at the end, I want to talk about your haters because you, you've accumulated Bro. a few on the internet. So I feel like you should address them as well in this uh, magnificent podcast uh, called Backward Point. Yeah, I mean, let's start with the PSL wrap. We witnessed one of the greatest PSL finals of all time yeah. on Sunday. Um, I mean, this is something that's been lacking in the past few PSL. Like the, the the finals have not been as thrilling as the one that we saw on Sunday. Um, and so that was really heartening to see. Two of the best teams qualified for the PSL final. I had no doubts in the whole on there. Then Multan Sudan, um, they they came they came through as well. Um, but it was sort of like a a battle between Lahore's bowling versus uh, Multan's batting. Um, I mean, when I saw Lahore post up two hundred, and a part of that was because of Shaheen Afridi's batting. I saw the clip when. There were five wickets down, and David Wiesa was all padded up, wearing his helmet, just walking in. And Shaheen jumps in. And he's like, "Hold on, David, let right. me go." Viral moment. I almost got MS Dhoni in the 2011 World Cup final vibes. Imran Khan in the 92 World Imran Cup. Imran Khan in the 92. We talked about Shaheen being the captain, being the leader in a previous episode of the podcast, and this just echoes that thought. But this man is down bad for his wife, eh? What do you mean? Like he, there's just these viral videos of him and these like mashup ed- edits where he's like, is talking about his family. Like, oh, I want to thank my family and dot, dot, dot. And then he like blushes away. I think it's so cute, man. Yeah. yeah. The modern day love story between Shaheen Afridi and his wife. I absolutely love it. Uh, but yeah, back to the game, uh, which some would also consider this being game because, you know. Shine has Shine's that got game, mate. Shine's got that risk. On and off the field. <laughs> On and off that field. Uh, man, great performance. All around performance. One for the books. Oh, uh, he really smashed 44 off 15, five sixes. I was just going to say, 44 off 15. That's insane. Uh, he just came in with a mission. He was like all in for it. He's like, I'm either going to stay here two ga- two balls or I'm out of here uh, with like a quick scoring 30 40. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't spare anyone. Like he went after the bowlers. He went after the player of the tournament, Esan Allah, bowling at 145 clicks. And didn't he put in like for 22 in that over? Yeah. I mean, that was the first time actually I saw Esan Allah under pressure. Uh, he's a new upcoming bowler, emerging talent. Um, got picked in the Pakistan team. But this was sort of the first time where I saw him um, being taken to the cleaners. It was a. I don't want to say it was a delight to see because, you know, I, I don't really like ballers getting pummeled like that. But it was just a masterclass by Shaheen. He was there out for a mission. He wanted to be the first captain to go back to back. Um, and he did. And he uh, had great support from Abdullah Shafiq on the other end. This guy is, um, I don't want to, you know, overhype him at the beginning. Go ahead. Career. Let's do he's, it. He's just starting, but he already has three or four test match hundreds. And he seems to be one of the upcoming generational talents. I love I love Abdullah Shafiq. I think he's after Babar Azam, uh he's one of my favorite players to look at when yeah. he's batting, uh, especially in the box signing team. I don't think there's anybody as classy as Abdullah Shafiq and his mid-on drives are also like mm-hmm. um art. And then I didn't even know he had this T20 game that he just absolutely like completely bombarded us with, especially in the knockoff stages. He showed up, he was there for a mission, and he and he pulled through. And I'm so happy he's a PSL winner because he deserves it. He's really tried... Back-to-back back PSL winner, actually. True. And he's really tried to make sure that uh, his name is stamped upon the game. And that's like not more evident than him being called into the national squad against Afghanistan, who's a formidable T20 side, by the way. Yeah. People are like um, cutting them down. And uh, and trying to like degrade them, but they're a very formidable side. Um, they have experienced players, players who play in international T20 leagues all around the world. These guys play like 20, 40, 20 to forty games in leagues anywhere, right? Yeah. So that's a high level competition that they're a part of. So it's gonna be a good three game series, and I'm just glad that Abdullah Shafiq and Shadab and all these boys are getting their moment to shine uh, in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, like when Lahore posted up two hundred. Uh, you would typically think like with the bowling attack like Lahore, this would be an easy bag, game win in the bag. Um, however, when you look at the batting lineup of 
of Muldan. They have the highest run score out the PS Silver's won. Um, they've got depth in their batting, and I feel like they have one of the most strongest middle orders um, in the PSL. So, yeah. like, Riley Rousseau, they have Tim David, Kyron Pollard, Kuzil Shal, and Riley. So, they have depth, and they have very explosive middle order batting. Um, and that's sort of why we saw the game go to the last over. Um, I think Harris Shroff doesn't have the best relationship with the 19th over. <laughs> he gave, again, 22, I believe, in the 19th over. What happens for him there? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just it's pressure. He, he's not being able to execute what he wants to do. I feel like he was trying to ball really fast in this PSL, uh, especially towards the knockout stages. Um, we saw him clock 154 as well, um, which is close to 96 miles an hour. So maybe he's just trying to go for the aggression side using his pace. But my understanding or my understanding of the game is that like when you're playing at this level, pace Pace matters as a bowler, but as a batsman, like you're so used to playing 90 miles plus an hour on a regular basis that it's just another ball. I have a journalistic question for you. Uh, it might be a bit controversial. Was this a good was this a good PSL? I thought it was. Um, I was looking at a stat of you know strike rates of local batsmen since the inception of the PSL. So initially when the PSL was in Dubai, the UAE, the strike rates were like ranging around 120, which wasn't that good. So the, then the PSL came to Pakistan, strike rates were around 130 for the local batsmen. Um, and now in this year's PSL, strike rates were above 140 plus for local batsmen. So I think that's always a plus. We've seen lots of new talent coming up and that's how I judge a PSL. Like how many emerging players have we seen? How many, you know, X factor players have we sought out? And I think I can count them um, on my fingertips, you know, as Sanula, Abbas Afridi, Saima Yub, Azam Khan re-emerged in this PSL. <laughs> yeah. Imad Wasim as well, you can say oh for that fact. God. So yeah. I'm judging the PSL based on those numbers, like the amount of players blocked on um is able to produce for their national team and improve their bench strength. So in that sense, considering the what the Pakistan team that was announced for the Afghanistan series, I thought it was a really good PSL. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I don't think it was the best PSL out of the eight for sure. I think some of the earlier ones uh, had a lot more drama, had a lot more star power. We're in a phase of rebuilding a Pakistan cricket team right now where uh, we have a lot of stars, but we have a lot of emerging stars. Um, and I guess I'm just a little bit nostalgic for this Sohail Tanri, Shahid Afridi, Ms. Bahlak era, maybe because of how congruent it was with the LLC. Um, you know, the Shahid Afridi won the PSL, to, next day Shahid Afridi won um, the Legends League Cup. Uh, so I, it was just like that, that, that juxtaposition was very, um, I, I was, I'm missing the old times a little bit, maybe. You you maybe say. you should watch more Karachi King games because, you know, Sh- Shoei Malik is the only person left of that lot <laughs> still playing cricket currently. Hey, I th- I think we've got a reputation on this podcast or at least the impression that we don't like Shoei Malik. I, I like Shoei Malik, right? But th- you also need to understand that Shoei Malik is, uh, is from an era that no longer exists. This guy has played uh, for Pakistan cricket when Salim Malik was playing for Pakistan cricket, Ijaz Ahmed was playing for Pakistan cricket. These people like are ancient. Yeah, so Shoei Sh- Malik came in the national team as a replacement for Sakhalin Mustang in the late nineties. Yeah, and he also has a record of um, batting at every single batting position from one to eleven. Yeah, quite remarkable. But like, we don't hate the guy. We just don't think he should be the national squad. I think I think it's he's one of the greatest T20 players from Pakistan. Sure, have ever emerged. He's one of the best players to spin. The greatest T20 player to not win in a PSL. Wow, you heard it here numbers, first. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> uh, he's a terrific player to spin. One of my favorite fielders from from the Pakistan team. Yeah, um, 2007 World Cup uh, would have should have been his highlight. Um, I I feel bad for the guy there. I think that I saw a moment recently on somewhere on YouTube where he kind of got choked up. When that happened, yeah, and uh, when you know, they were just talking about Yunus Khan and how nice he is and how amazing of a guy he is, and so when 2007 World Cup happened, when the when they got the cup, Yunus Khan first gave it to Misbah in 09. In 09, yeah, yeah. And they first gave it to Misbah, who had done that infamous scoop shot to cost the game, and then after that, he gave it to Malik, who was like the captain of that tournament. Yeah. Uh, people forget that. I, I don't. I don't forget that. That was a a great tournament. Asif 
against India was still a highlight. Four wickets in the final. I mean, four wickets in the final. Should Asif be a T20 World Cup winner? I guess we'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> a part of Shoaib Malik's legacy will also be, and this is going to be a big throwback for all the teenagers listening to us, but Shoaib Malik was also captain of one of the most successful teams of all time in Sialkot Stadiums. Ooh. So that's back in the day when there used to be a Pakistan T20 Cup. Karachi Dolphins was a team, Heather Wild Hawks. Uh, there was Karachi Zebras, Zebras as well. Yeah. Islamabad Leopards, oh the Horror Lions. Deep cuts. Deep cuts. Um, I remember the first uh, national T20, well, the first game that we ever saw in a stadium, first cricket game yeah. ever, was the final of that T20 Cup. I think it was 2006, I believe. Yeah. And it was uh, Sialkot Stallions led by uh, Shreya Malik versus Karachi Dolphins led by Shahid Afridi. Mm-hmm. Man, what a, that's such a throwback game. Yeah. It was like had all like the like the domestic stars in in those teams. Yeah. This is a great time, man. Yeah, it, it was supposed to be like so competitive. And um, I remember Karachi losing to Slav Salkot um, and even to Raul Pandi. Karachi was like jinx in the final. So they would always yeah. qualify for they the never finals. Won. They and, never and won. They would keep just lo- losing in the final. Yeah, and Salkot won like 11 times or something. It was yeah. crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. But yeah, like th- I remember that time and it feels like such a long time ago, which it yeah. is, which it's obviously like almost 20 years ago we're talking about. I still remember like us uh, being in our living room watching that on TV and one of the games even went to a Super Over, I remember. It was one of the amazing matches we've yeah. ever seen. So yeah, yeah so we, good times. Point is we don't hate Trey Malik. Like we, yeah. we like the guy. Um, But like, yeah, so coming back to this current Pakistan team and I think we could go to the Afghanistan preview as well. Um, it's I'm very, I'm looking forward to it. Um, if I had to predict how this how the series would go down, I'm going to give it a 2-1. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give one to Afghanistan, and I'm going to say that Pakistan takes the series home. Um, that's me not discrediting Afghanistan. I think Afghanistan might do a 2-1. I don't think Pakistan will be swept. If Pakistan gets swept, I think the lobby against Babar Azam will be quite subdued. But at the same time, if Pakistan sweep the other side, I think you'll hear a lot of mouths... Uh, chirping against Babar Azam, which will be annoying because Babar Azam isn't going anywhere until the World Cup happens this year in October. So you got to endure him for the next seven months anyways. Um, or more, if if there's an absolutely amazing performance in the World Cup, if we bring it home, which is highly unlikely, just political pressures aside, I don't think it's going to happen. But that's a podcast for another time. Um, I just don't want to hear the loud uh, chirping against Babar Azam. In, in any case, in any case, I don't want... To wish ill to the Pakistan cricket team but at the same time I know if Pakistan sweeps 3-0 they will immediately pit a Babar against Shadab which is just a bad look yeah the one thing I, I hope doesn't come out of this series is like let's say hypothetically Pakistan does end up losing there shouldn't be much of a media back for it. this is a very young team we need to give them the opportunity to go out there and express themselves um and like you mentioned, this is a game against a very formidable Afghanistan side led by Rashid Khan. Yeah. And I would say like even half their team contains all of T20 Globetrotters. They play all the great leagues in the in the, in the world. They're slowly getting experience and they're improving. Um, so what I'm more ex- most excited about is seeing a different opening pair for Pakistan. Yeah. Um, so a more, like I mentioned in the past, a more attacking approach. So mm-hmm. for instance... If we see Saima Yub and Haris opening, um, that I feel like is going to be the most effective use of the power play. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Also excited to see some of the fast bowling um, talent that's going to be on display. Zaman Khan, we saw in the PSL final, deliver one of the most high-pressure match-winning overs um, yeah. in PSL history. And, and it's hard to believe that he's still playing in the emerging category and uh, you know he has also won two PSLs back to back, so want to see him in action. He's increased his pace over, over the last year, and he's a very like Malinga esque, I do, yeah, slingy it, action. Nails his yorkers, nails the length ball in the, in the beginning. Throws me throws me off as a viewer a little bit because I don't expect that to happen whenever he's bowling it. Yeah, it'll be like his fifth ball in the over. I'm like, oh, he still swings with that slingy action. Yeah, and he has a good slower ball. Me. He's a very smart bowler, so that's something we always need in T20s. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, also we have some experience in the team. Nasim Shah at this point, we can say it's sort of a more, more of the experienced ball is relative yeah. to Not all Not a veteran, ones. but yeah, he's getting there. Yeah. And then, you know, we might see Imad Wasim. I, I, it's hard to see Imad on the bench. Um, yeah, I see him in his playing seniority. Level. And uh, we probably will see Azam Khan with the gloves. And I feel like... Do you have a playing 11 
for us. I don't have a possible playing eleven. Um, I just hope the best eleven comes out of the game. I I shouldn't have prepared an eleven, but I, I think there will be a, a lot of mix and match. I don't think there will. I if I had to put money on it, I don't think we'll, we'll see the same squad play three games. Uh, for sure. I think though six. I can name five or six guys for sure that's going to be there. So Nasim Shah, Shadab Khan, Iftahar, Ahmed, Imad, Wasim, Sean, Masood, um, uh, Muhammad Wasim. So these six guys, you know, they're part of the last um, uh, five or six or five of them were part of the last T20 World Cup squad. So they've sort of continued with that same squad. So it's hard to see them being benched. Uh, so we might see like you know two or three, four maybe debutants in the first game. So yeah, let's see how that goes. It'll be a good test of our bench strength, and you know, given the amount of cricket that's coming up in the next few months and the next year, it'll be good just to know that we have these players on the bench. And again, for me, just to see a different opening pair, uh, because my mindset is T twenties, three phases of the game, power play, middle overs, death. You need specialist players for each phase of the game. Should uh, Should Abdullah Shafiq be in the ODI squad at number four? Where does Rizwan play? Five. I think that's way too low for him. He's his game is more like you know singles and doubles hitting the wide boundary, but he's not a you know power hitter as per se. Five is in a power hitting position. Six, seven, eight are. Well, India's number five is Hardik Pandya. Well, India's number five was also Surya Kumar Yadav, which we'll get into. So but let's not talk about that. I don't know. It's hard to say. Abdullah Shafiq might be too early. I don't think Pakistan is going um, to play him. They did give him a few games in in Netherlands. Um, but it, this is a World Cup year. I think the next few games that we're going to see for any team in the world is going to be a possible, likely mix and match them testing their combinations. Right. So the, let me the let Cup. me put you in with another. Is do you think Abdullah Shafiq will play the ODI series against New Zealand? I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't know. It's it's risky to you know go with Abdullah Shafiq. You might have more seasoned players like Iftikhar or so or uh, sorry, Har Sohail, Agha Salman. Har Sohail over Sh- Shafiq. Really? Well, you know, experience. Someone who's played two World Cups has a 44 plus average in ODIs, 85 plus strike rate. Um, Can bowl as well, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Gives you a bowling option. Maybe, maybe. World Cup in India, left arm spinner. So it's hard. I don't see Abdullah Shafiq being in the ODI team, if I'm being very honest. I think that'd be, I don't, I know it's again, different podcast, but I think that'd be bad. I would like at least put him in the squad. And it'll be unfair to him if he bats at four because he's an opener. So I would even, ideally, even in ODIs? He doesn't yeah. open for T twenties. He goes one down. So, so if you go one down in T twenties, you can still go number four on ODIs. Isn't that how it works? Baba goes opener in ODIs, goes number three on opener in T twenties, goes number three in ODIs, number four in T tests. That's how Baba operates. That's how Kane William operates. That's how Kohli operates. Well, see you've triggered a very sensitive topic here but so uh, Bob Razam is an opener in T20s um, none of Kohli Williamson Smith or Joe Root the Fab Five yeah. none of them open in T20s they're all anger players who play at number three Okay. so uh, similarly I feel like on the same vein I think uh, Bob Razam should also play one down and we've make, done this before make way for a more against. attacking batsman <laughs> Who can make use of the power play at best? Someone like a Fakhar Zaman or a Mohamed Harris or even maybe Saima Yu. Yeah, okay, that's a different conversation. But I'm just saying, for Abdul Shafiq's sake, I think there should be some conversation about him being in the uh, in the ODI squad at least. I, I would like to see him. He's a technically sound player. He hits the ball hard. We saw it in the T20, the PSL this year. Um, he could be a good option. Like he was, his strike rate was above one forty five, one fifty every game mm-hmm. he played when he scored over forty. That's that's good. those are good numbers. Yeah. Um. So I would love to see that kind of combination. Maybe a number four for him, five for Rizwan, six. We can start getting. You know, about the Shafiq, I just want to say, Mizbal gets a lot of hate for his coaching tenure, but you have to also realize that Mizbal was the one that initially identified Abdullah Shafiq as a talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe he rushed into uh, getting Abdullah to play T twenty the eyes in New Zealand way too early it was foreign conditions for him uh, a good bowling attack from New Zealand but um, and he flopped that series that's that's totally fine but the point is that Mizba was the one that identified the talent you know saw him visually being a very appealing player technically correct um, yeah and that paved the way for him to you know play more first class cricket score runs and make his t- way back in the test team yeah so props to props to Mizba I feel like these all these players are getting a big resurgence right after um Shreya Bakhtar's vlogs 
like these guys have become human like like humanized yeah. a lot like really grounded uh just seeing Mizba joke around with with the um, Afridi and Shreya Bakhtar. Well, one person who was not redeemed in Shreya Bakhtar's vlogs was Mohamed Amir. <laughs> Somehow he made he came out came across more annoying. Um, I don't know if that was possible, but yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, so how, I mean, what, you, you never told me how how you think the series is going to turn out. Like two one one two. My prediction. Um, yeah, two one Pakistan to win. Two one Pakistan. Yeah. If you think three zero is also likely on the table for Pakistan. 3-0 winning or losing? Winning. Winning? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, for sure. Do you think if they sweep it, do you think there's a question mark on Babur? Definitely not. I, I don't think this series has anything to do with Babur Azam or his captaincy. The one thing, however, might be is just um, looking at the approach. You know, what, what is our batting approach in T20s? You know, we're, we're opening with two anchors and uh, three of our top four are anchors. So I'm talking about Rizwan, Babur, and then Sean Masood, who kind of bats at four in our T20i squad. No other team in the world has three anchors in their top four. So, you know, because of this series, we'll be able to see how Simon, you, Mohamed Harris effectively and utilize Azim. and Azim Khan, you know, utilize the power play. So it's going to be basically the inverse of everything we've done in the past three years. Basically, basically. And, you know, it's, it's high risk cricket. We might see early wickets fall, but, you know, that's why if you have one anchor, he might be able to uh, come in and consolidate. Um, but having three out of Who, four. Who's that? You know, they could play with Lil Shafiq. Uh, okay, at, at number yeah. three, he's also in the squad. Fair, yeah. Um, Chan was there, obviously, so true, he true, might be able true. to okay. consolidate yeah, I, as well. I, I, I didn't take that um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how Azam Khan does in these conditions. He's a, a terrific player of spin. Um, we saw him even smack Rashid Khan and uh, all, most of the spinners in the PSL. And um, people commenting on Azam Khan's performance are saying that he is scoring lots of runs on you know flat batting wickets. In a pindi ground where the boundary is 60 meters. Um, so I'm hoping that he scores runs here um, and shuts down his haters. Gets that confidence too, right? Yeah. And maybe gets a national callback for the ODIs. Who knows? All right. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. The real 2 1 winners. Australia. Wait, do, did you want to go to the uh, Pakistan, sorry, India series, or do you want to talk about the hate that I'm getting on, on the internet? Let's do the hate at the end. Okay, let's finish it on positive. Let's go. Okay. So, Pakistan, uh, so Australia versus India series. India lost 2 1, was unable to chase 272? 270 in the, in the last ODI. But yeah. India was smacked. India smacked Australia in the first one. Yeah. Australia came back, beat them by 10 wickets in the second match. 41 overs. Um, or 39 overs, I believe. They finished, they chased it in 11 overs. Yeah, they chased it in 11 overs, so, yeah. which is absolutely insane. And then the third match, um, the funny thing I just noticed was that Australia scored 270, but none of their players scored a 50. I saw that. Did you see that? I think everybody went into like Top double digits. Top score was 47. Everybody went into double digits. They didn't go yeah. to like, nobody scored a half century <laughs> no, even. Nobody scored a half century. But score. they came back strong. Yeah. Like, and so... And this is the, the, the shocking part for me. This is an Australian team without David Warner in the first two ODIs opening, without Pat Cummins, without Josh, Josh Hazelwood. So you add these few, few players and they, they're going to be looking like a very deadly team. They, they almost sound in, undefeatable when you put them in. Because, I mean, beating India in India in a World Cup year that's in India. I mean, those are all green flags for Australia. But we got to talk about the rooster in the hen sack or the rooster in the chicken chop. Surya Kumar Yadav. AKA Sky. Three golden ducks in a row. In a row. Fun fact is he didn't get bat on ball in a single match. Not really. He was LBW in, in the, in the uh, first two games and he was bowled out in the third match. So, so he hasn't, in this entire series, he hasn't yet to touch a ball he, with his bat. Basically. Basically. Where's your sky? The sky is falling. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, the sky is raining eggs. I really haven't seen him perform that well in ODIs. And, you know, India is batting him at four. We're months away from a World Cup. And India is probably chopping and changing and testing out the different combinations. Um, and the hype around sky is probably what's making them put him in the playing 11. Um, but just haven't been able to c convert any scores so far. Um, and he's had a you know, a horrific series. He would want to forget this and move on to the next one. If right. possible. I, if possible. I'm not, I'm never forgetting this, by the way. <laughs> um, do you think that uh, Rohit Sharma is a good captain? 
Yeah, I think so. I, I'm just trying to figure out what he's trying to do right now with his team, but because he's playing way too many all rounders, maybe that that's just a thing of the future where even Australia is playing, you know, three to four all rounders in their team, trying to extend their batting lineup, trying to have more bowling options. So that's what I'm seeing right now because India's middle order, right? I think uh, Hardik Pandya is coming at five, Akshar Patel is coming at six, Jadhi is coming at seven. So just way too many all rounders. So. I'm not sure what they're trying to do. I, I like to have a few, at least top six or top seven, uh, f- f- five being specialist players for each role uh, rather than having, you know, half bats and half bowler and then they're, they're not able to deliver in any of the both uh, aspects. And it's just, it's a flop. Do you think um, India's middle order is in shambles? Um, not really, no. With Virat Kohli being there, their lower middle order might be. Um, but yeah, with Virat Kohli being there, honestly, I thought they would win the third match. You know, they Sky needed, didn't show up though. <laughs> they needed 117 off 117, and Virat Kohli and Hardik Pandya were set, and they just lost a few quick wickets, and yeah, just they they lost by like 20 odd runs. So shocking to me. It's absolutely shocking. Like India getting beat by Australia in India. This is the second time they've been beat by Australia in India, which is also crazy. I think the last time was right before the ODI World Cup, if I'm not wrong. And um, yeah, I think they were like. Again, uh, Australia was up in the series. So India was up in the series, and Australia came back and won it. Is India a good home side in ODIs? In ODIs, I'm not sure. See, the thing is, uh, a lot of these players, right, an Australian team, they, they've they played in the IPL. They know what these pitches do. They know uh, what most of these Indian bowlers bowl like. So that gives them an automatic edge Right, and I think the pitches that India is making, uh, or the BCCI is making for these series, they're pretty evenly spaced. Like it's, they have enough to offer with the ball up front. There's enough swing. Uh, we saw Mitchell Stark mm. ball amazingly. Yeah. Um, there's turn as well. Um, saw Kuldeep out of you know ball some terrific deliveries. Um, oh, that bold! Oh, was, who is he to really Alex bold? Carey? Wow, unplayable. Un- it reminded me of Rashid Khan against uh, Virat Kohli. It reminded me of uh, Adil, Adil Rashid to Virat Kohli. What did I say? Rashid Khan. Sorry, my bad. Adil Rashid to Virat Kohli. It reminded me of um, Chahal against uh, Birat- Babar Azam in the 2019. Was it Chahal? That was Kuldeep Yadav. Kuldeep Yadav yeah. again. Again, like w- one of those balls that like I-, I still remember to this yeah. day. He was in 49, got him out, potentially lost the match because of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one of the one of the great leg spinners. I as a leg spinner, very excited to see balls like that looping in the air, breaking almost like yeah. a feet. Um, even the you know it's a good ball when the batsman is giving you props. Yeah, like you, oh wow, like I definitely had no idea what was going on there. Yeah, uh, would have seen, would have loved to see Marnus there because the Marnus would have vocal props. Like you would probably go hug him and give him like tips on how to do that yeah. better. Just you know, Marnus being Marnus, but. Yeah, great moment there for uh, uh, Kuldeep Yadav there. That's it. That's yeah. probably the end of my praising for the Indian cricket team because it was, apart from that, was a hoarded. hoarded uh, yeah, hoarded. I mean, so but the point that I was trying to make was that India's making like good pitches for everybody yeah. to, to do well. Um, but 270 in this climate is still quite low. Dude, 270, think of it as from a pressure point of view. 270 in a series decider... Um, with you know a decent bowling attack from Australia, even though India got a good start, they just sort of like f- fell behind in the run rate towards the end. Um, maybe played too many dot balls. Yeah, I just think um, these pitches won't fly in the World Cup, will they? No, I think for the World Cup, what happens in ICC events that ICC sort of has a say in what kind of pitches they want. Say, um, my understanding from my experience of watching is that um, I think we might see pitches where, you know, you do sc- see scores of 300 being chased. Yeah. So there'll be good matches to watch. Um, I'm really excited for the ODI World Cup, to be honest. I think we're going to have a really good shot at this um, this World Cup. Might even be, fingers crossed, India versus Pakistan final. Really? Okay, well, I don't want to call that. So for, I need to see the remainder of the year to call yeah. that. I need to see how Pakistan does against um, Afghanistan, against New Zealand. In, in the, the Asia, Asia Cup. Asia Cup. Yeah. The Asia Cup will be a good uh, sort of a preamble to the World Cup being in Asia and then having a lot of Asian teams that will play in the World Cup the next month. Yeah. So great, great to see that. But I, I don't want to make that call just yet. Um, 
Any final thoughts on this Australia versus India series? Australia Australia lost the uh, Test series, but come came back in the ODIs. I think are there T20s as well? Uh, I don't think so. I think the IPL is starting very soon. So okay, yeah. So a lot of these players were probably just staying back and yeah. going to play the IPL after. Uh, I think the Test match series was was okay. It yeah. wasn't the best. Uh, better than the Pakistan series at home for sure. I'll give you props there. Um, ODI series was a lot, was a little bit more a bit more fun um but just massive question marks on sky man i don't know if he can come back from this yeah like i said like it's a world cup year not sure if india will you know persist with him uh that'll be a test of Rohit Sharma's captaincy and how much he trusts his players um so yeah we'll see but i think it was a good series i think australia is a formidable odi squad um and like I said, if you just add Pat Cummins, Josh Hazelwood, David Warner as an opener, yeah, um, they almost seem indestructible. Yeah, it, it'll it'll be tough to get them out. And also, I'm seeing Mitchell Stark back in rhythm. Like his ball swinging back in, he's bowling at good pace. Um, his second spell is as fast as his first spell. So, um, an informed Mitchell Stark is a it's a it's it's horror for any opening batsman. That's true, man. This guy swings it back a mile at like 95 yeah. degree 95 miles and this is like it's always fun to see him especially he's also become one of those bowlers like Shahi Nafridi whose first over is always it's an event it's an event but I remember that test match where he got basically Rohit Sharma out twice didn't go upstairs once yeah still shocking to me but yeah he's, he's yeah. becoming one of those bowlers you're right fun. I mean I think it all started back when um he bowled the 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 first over in the world cup Roy finals Burns? 2015 was it no no the no, world no. cup final in 2015 he got uh Brendan McCullum bold. Oh yeah, and I that, about that that I think that was the match winning point for Australia. McCullum was on fire that entire. He world was on cup. fire. That was New Zealand's World Cup to lose. Yeah, and th- and they did. They, they did. showed up. They did. Yeah, <laughs> they they really choke in these big events. Um, aside from the World Test Championship final when they beat India. Ooh, what's gonna happen in, in this Test Championship World Cup final? This is basically gonna be the same teams playing again. In Lord. Yeah. So the first thing that there's the finals in June, right? So Australia yeah. versus. Um, India at the Oval in June. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Hope it's not a wa- washout. Um, but I think they have reserve days for those games, don't they? Because this is one game. Yeah, they should. They should have re- re- reserve days. Um, reverse days. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, I want to talk about the hate that I'm getting on the internet. Yeah, let's let's end on that. So uh, we've been getting quite viral on the social media networks, uh, TikTok and Instagram specifically. A lot of your hot takes are uh, giving you heat back. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, when you play with fire, you expect to get burned. <laughs> so my only thing to say here is that Pakistan and cricket fans need to be able to take constructive criticism. I would I would just alter that a little bit and say cricket fans need to be able to take criticism because the same happens with Indian cricket fans, Bengali cricket fans. If we start talking about shit, shit about Shakib, we'll get Bengali fans like on our case as well. Yeah. So cricket fans who are rabid need to calm down. Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking about Bob Razum improving his strike rate box and having a more attacking approach in their T20 side. Yeah. Um, and this is constructive criticism. I'm obviously a big box and cricket fan. Massive, massive Bob Razum fan. I am I feel bad. I have to like justify my place here. Um, but I just feel like it, a lot of the Bob fans out there cannot take anything against him. So he has a very cult following I'm seeing. I also and, see you like really engaging in the comment section. Um which is fine. Like you're trying to have these conversations yeah. with these people. It just what do you say to a guy who's just out there swearing at you? you, you there's nothing to do, so you yeah, don't, you ignore. Don't him. respond to that. But you know, if anybody's like actually ah, bringing up stats, I, I'm also a stat guy. I love yeah. to like go back and reference games, matches where I think if Pakistan had a better, more attacking approach and T20s, maybe in the power play, we could have done better at many of the games. Yeah. So. Yeah, but this is the first time I've been I've been getting death threats. You got death threats? Death no way. Threats. Um. It's also for a, a, a few of them is from Muhammad Amr fans. Oh, Muhammad Amr fans? Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't expect anything less from them, would you? Yeah, I, I would not. I would not. Um, it's fine. Uh, it's all part of the... It's run of the mill uh, cricket fans. I see a lot of people giving threat, death threats to Muhammad Amr and yeah. Baba Razam on social media. You just got to, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, it's an, it's been an interesting few weeks. Um, we keep continue make, continue to making these podcasts, and the fans most for the majority of the part like our conversations. We got a lot of very wholesome DMs talking about, oh, when's the podcast coming back? You guys should mm-hmm. do more than one episode a week. And trust me, we're trying. 
Um, yeah. But it's always nice to see people enjoying your work. So thank you, everybody, for watching and uh, supporting the channel, man, and supporting the podcast. It's, yeah, it's a delight. It really helps. I think that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a community of people who we can, you know, have conversations of cricket about. Um, in the future, we'll be hoping to, you know, find a way of incorporating uh, a bit of fan interaction, listener interaction. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you are listening to us, thank you for supporting. Um, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, rate us on Spotify. Yeah, that really rate helps. us on uh, rate us on the podcast apps that you yeah. listen because th- that really helps on Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify po- Podcasts. Um, all that really helps in the algorithm just pushing our yeah v- videos out. It helps other people find the content. As well. Correct, and tell your friends about it if uh, if you actually truly like us. Uh, we really appreciate the uh, support. Yep. If you disagree with any of our opinions, uh, you can you know comment. We can have a discussion there. Yeah, um, for sure. Like we're always open in the comments. DM us, leave us a comment. TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube, everything's game. I think it's a good Great. place to end. This is a good place to end. This is uh, Bashar Sayyid signing out. Yeah. My name is Nazar. And thank you for listening to the podcast. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>